I've never felt more passionate about anything than barbering. Teaching people the right way, like teaching people how to treat their clients, teaching people how to treat their employees, teaching people how to treat their coworkers, understanding sanitation, understanding quality control, understanding client retention, the stuff that's really relative to being successful in this trade. Not a clean haircut. Clean haircuts come with time, that's fine, but a clean haircut will not keep a client. Respect, diligence, and understanding, that'll keep a client. It's something that has to be taught. A lot of these dudes don't understand that. They think just because they're so dope at cutting hair, they're the best out. Flashing money on Instagram, and that's the stuff that's ruining the integrity of something that I care so much about, and I can't deal with that shit. Static selector. I'm Shane Nesbitt. I'm a father, a barber, and a businessman. I've been lucky enough to travel the world doing what I love most, and I'd like to introduce you to some amazing people that I've met along the way. When I was going into opening the shop, I wanted to spend the money to have proper signage and I had heard Ken's name over and over as far as like just having the most validity in the Bay Area for sign painting. Like hand painted signs were like a lost trade. And barbering, when I got into barbering over a decade ago, it was the same thing. Ken is the most abrasive when it comes to the preservation of his trade. Here's two things that I walked into it with the mentality of money is never gonna be a deciding factor. And popularity is never gonna be a deciding factor. I remember being at my grandmother's wake on like the, it was like when I first started apprenticing. And I remember being so excited because I finally realized this is, now I'm on that, I'm on that staircase going towards what I wanna do in life. I'm not just aimlessly trying to figure it out. Yeah. And of course, I'm the only grandson. My grandmother died and all of her friends are asking me, what are you doing with your life? Sick. This one guy, her neighbor, comes up to me. He goes, "What are you gonna do? What are you doing with your life?" I was like, "Oh, I'm an apprenticeship." And he like lights up. And he's like, "Oh, really? What?" And I was like, "Oh, sign painting." And he just puts his hand on my shoulder and walks away. He didn't even dignify another word. He was done. It was intergenerational too, because then like that same year, I was uh, I was dating a girl, and she was a highly educated girl with highly educated friends, and of course. First thing they meet me, what do you do for a living? Sick. Ask me and I tell them and then it was just kind of like, all of a sudden you can see the gears in their mind going from like intellectual conversation to sports. Sorry, I don't follow sports. I'm kind of like, yeah. uh, what, are these, what do Cretans listen, what do Cretans enjoy? <laughs> I've always been drawn to the people that do exactly what they do for no recognition. And they're doing it because that's the only way they get through the day. Those are the ones that maintain longevity though. Those yeah. are the only ones that will be, maintain longevity in any trade. The guys that do anything with passion, whether it be riding a skateboard or painting a sign or cutting hair, inevitably stand out, dude. Like there's no way that they don't. I love cutting hair. People are like, why the fuck do you cut hair at four in the morning? There's a multitude of reasons. Primarily, I don't have to deal with any bullshit on the street or anybody. I'm just here by myself with the client. That's what it's all about, though, is you and the client. That's not about you. It's right. not about this legacy that you're going to put behind that is probably going to be forgotten because we don't decide who's relevant. Not at all. Our generation does not decide, decide who's relevant in what we do. The next generation does. So if you're a dick to the young kids, you know, they're going to remember that and forget about you. I don't know why him and I gravitate to one another like that but he can go off on a tangent to me and I can go off on a tangent to him and there's no judgment or any of that stuff it's it's kind of like a counterbalance thing so that's something that I respect a lot about him because I don't have any but I don't call people to bitch about what's going on that they have no idea what it takes to do what we do no idea the only person that really gets it and he's here is Ken with all the business shit aside that guy's somebody that I could talk to about real shit. So yeah, this uh, place right here is built by uh, my gold leaf mentor, William Blake. He uh, 
He built it because he was tired of looking at an empty lot. This goes into what I was talking about earlier about the, you know, my heroes are all people that do things without any desire to get paid big bucks or have some sort of widespread love from complete strangers. It's just for the sake of doing it. Does right? he have people come here and see this? This is amazing. Oh yeah, people come here and bug out. I bug out every day. It's like you can't have a bad day in a place like this. But uh, you know, people bug out and it's, it's nice. It's nice to have. It's, every time you go in here, you're a fan. It's very cool. And then this is where the shop is. Yeah, and this is and my little spot's tiny little room up there. <laughs> and he's wasted on the young. That's where all the magic happens. That's where we get weird. That's something too about Ken is that I, I don't think a single day goes by where he takes stuff for granted. Fortunately enough for him and for his clients, I think he derives inspiration from kind of everything. But I think that the little western town downstairs doesn't hurt. I think that that's kind of a cool setup. It's like anything. If it's you're somebody that appreciates great shit, stuff that has like integrity, stuff that has soul, stuff that has you can feel the passion behind it, such as this loyalty gold leaf. It's like something that I hope never gets lost. It shows that the business owner gave a crap. It yes. shows that they gave enough of a crap to instead of going into Kinko's and saying, hey, I want your $50 DigiPrint special, that they took the extra effort to search the other options out. The people that get it, get it. Yeah. You know, if you don't get it, don't get it. I think that both of us are just kind of out of our minds about the potential destruction of these trades for a quick dollar. Like, fuck a quick dollar. I'd rather have longevity, you know? There's no longevity in a quick dollar, in anything. Barbering, sign painting, anything. There's no longevity in a quick dollar.